Hi there, you are watching 10 minutes of BBTV News, brought to you by Bình Phước Television Station and Newspaper. I'm Bất Thủy with the latest news for today. Prime Minister and high-ranking delegation of Vietnam to attend ASEAN-Japan Summit. Bình Phước proposes additional planning for a traffic project. Bình Phước speeding up public investment disbursement. Multidimensional poverty rate to reduce to nearly 3% at year end. Let's begin our bulletin with the latest news from Bình Phước Province. Chairwoman of the Bình Phước Provincial People's Committee Trần Tuệ Hình put forth recommendation to supplement regional planning for certain transportation projects, bauxite mining projects, and social economic development initiatives in the province at an appraisal conference for the southeastern region on December 15. During the conference, Chairman Chen Tui Hien asked the Appraisal Council to consider and approve the following additions to Southeastern Region planning. First, the Hon Quan Specialized Airport, which covers an area of nearly 350 hectares. Second, a dry port in Dong Phu District, which spans nearly 40 hectares along the Dak Nong Bing Phuoc Ho Chi Minh City Transport Corridor. Third, extending the duration for the implementation of certain sections of the North-South Expressway, including Giang Nghĩa, Đắk Nông, Trơn Thành, Bình Phước, and Trơn Thành, Đức Hòa, Long An. Fourth, the Ho Chi Minh City Lộc Ninh Railway Line. Fifth, orientations for agricultural development and investment in the construction of a science, technology, and innovation park covering around 200 hectares in Đông Xoài City to cater to the needs of the southeastern region. Regarding planning for both such mining projects, Ms. Hien expressed her concern that the planning of large-scale and long-term projects, which are yet to be put into operation, will significantly impact local people and hinder social economic development. She noted that many projects and technical infrastructure that are crucial for people's livelihoods, production and business remain unimplemented. Therefore, she asked relevant ministries and agencies to conduct a comprehensive evaluation of the effectiveness of both site mining projects and make appropriate adjustments to facilitate local socio-economic development and ensure stable living conditions for the people. Accelerating the disbursement of public investment capital is considered an urgent task for the southeastern province of Bình Phước, especially as the disbursement has fallen short of expectations since the beginning of the year. According to a report from the Department of Planning and Investment, the province's plan to adjust public investment capital for 2023 amounts to over 5 trillion dong. However, only 2.8 trillion dong was dispersed in the first 11 months of the year, or just over half of the plan. Of this, capital dispersed from the central budget accounted for only 38% and from the local budget over 60%. Total disbursement for this year is estimated at over 4.5 trillion dong, representing 90% of the plan. Disbursement from the central budget is expected to reach over 93% and from the local budget nearly 90%. In addition to speeding up the disbursement of capital from the central government, the Provincial Department of Planning and Investment will advise the Provincial People's Committee to launch a 50-day and night campaign to accelerate disbursement in the time to come. Celebrating the 79th anniversary of the founding of the Vietnam People's Army Military Hospital 175, coordinated with the Trung Tui Group John Stock Company in the Bình Phước Province and Military Command Group 16 to organize the free eye surgery program at the military and civilian hospital Army Corps 16. After carefully screening over 200 cases of eye disease, doctors and nurses at Military Hospital 175 identified 47 patients who require eye surgery. Patients were selected from disadvantaged households and policy beneficiaries in Bingfield Province, as well as officials, trade union members, and workers at Army Corps 16. 
The program employed advanced facial eye surgery techniques and utilized soft lenses, enabling patients to remove their bandages within a few hours of undergoing surgery. All surgical expenses were covered by the Chung Tui Group as part of the Radiant Vietnamese Eyes program, which has been implemented in Bing Phu for five years with a total budget of two billion dong. As part of the program, each patient also received a gift package worth one million dong provided by Military Hospital 175, the Chung Tui Group, Army Corp 16, and the Bing Phu Women's Business Association. Moving on, Prime Minister Phạm Minh Ching is leading a high-ranking delegation of Vietnam to attend the commemorative summit for the 50th year of ASEAN-Japan friendship and cooperation and bilateral activities in the East Asian country from December 15 to 18. More in the following report. The commemorative summit for the 50th year of ASEAN-Japan friendship and cooperation took place on December 17 in Tokyo, with the participation of leaders of Japan and ASEAN member countries. After 50 years of establishment, ASEAN-Japan cooperation has expanded to all fields, from politics, security, economics, trade to people-to-people -people exchange. Notably, the two sides have upgraded their ties to a comprehensive strategic partnership. Looking to the future, the two sides agreed to develop the relationship in a practical and effective manner, bringing practical benefits to their peoples. Accordingly, the two sides will maintain and promote economic relations, increase cooperation in combating terrorism and transnational crime, and ensuring maritime security, and further boost people-to-people -people exchange, among others. Speaking at the event, Prime Minister Pham Min Chin spoke highly of the spirit of solidarity and cooperation between ASEAN and Japan. He also welcomed and valued Japan's contributions to the process of building the ASEAN community. The Vietnamese Prime Minister also affirmed that, amid headwinds in the region and the world, the two sides should further strengthen cooperation and strive to turn the ASEAN-Japan Comprehensive Strategic Partnership into a symbol of international solidarity and cooperation. At the end of the summit, the leaders adopted a joint vision statement on ASEAN-Japan friendship and cooperation, and its implementation plan. Within the framework of the above summit, Prime Minister Pham Min Chin had meetings with leaders of the host country, and a number of ASEAN countries. Meeting with Prime Minister Kishida Fumio, Chin proposed Japan support Vietnam with new generation ODA loans for projects in digital infrastructure, green transformation, and strategic infrastructure, especially North-South high-speed railway project. The Prime Minister also proposed that the two sides study the possibility of cooperation in training high-quality human resources, aiming to build and implement this especially important and symbolic project in the future. Prime Minister Kishida affirmed that he attaches great importance to Prime Minister Chin's proposal and will direct agencies to carefully study the proposal. Meeting with Thailand's Prime Minister Swetha Thavisin, the two sides agreed to coordinate to effectively implement the action program to implement the Vietnam-Thailand Enhanced Strategic Partnership for the 2022-2027 period and try to soon lift two-way trade to 25 billion US dollars. The two prime ministers also agreed to strengthen defense and security cooperation, exchanging information in fighting cross-border crimes. Finally, the multidimensional poverty rate in Vietnam will reduce to 2.93% in 2023, a drop of 1.1 percentage point compared to the last year. According to the government's report, on the implementation of the National Programme on Sustainable Poverty Reduction, the ratio of poor households in poor districts and ethnic minority areas will also reduce by 5.62 and 3.2 percentage points to about 33% and 17.82% respectively by the end of this year. Previously, the National Assembly and the government set a target to reduce the ratio of poor households in 74 poor districts by the 4th of May percentage points, by the end of this year, nine additional communes are expected to be omitted from the list of specially disadvantaged communes. 
the government's report said documents guiding the implementation of the national program on sustainable poverty reduction and addressing difficulties and obstacles during the implementation process have been issued timely, creating the legal framework for the work. That is the end of our bulletin today. To rewatch this news, you can download BBTV Go or visit our website and YouTube channel. Thanks for staying with us and see you next time.